Hi there, my name is DJ Eshelman and today we are going to be working on my Nexus 6P um, mostly because it's about two and a half years old now and is starting to not do battery well and when I say not do battery well I mean uh, at 6 o'clock today I unplugged it and by 10 o'clock a.m. it was already dead at 50% battery life so something's definitely not right with I think the battery so what I've done is I've gone on to Amazon and I'll have the links to this uh, in the video description there but I have actually purchased a replacement battery that is it was like 15 bucks or something like that it was really cheap so honestly I think uh, if we can make this happen and replace this battery I think the phone has plenty of life left in it and saves me from having to spend you know nine hundred dollars on a new phone so it's worth a shot right fifteen bucks is worth it so I'm inviting you along for my journey as I probably mess this up but hopefully not and um, we'll just go from there alright let's take a look at some of the tools I'll be using here alright so let's start looking at some of the tools we'll be using for this video uh, first off the Nexus 6P you'll want to make sure you have a backup just in case this goes horribly wrong uh, hopefully that's not foreshadowing, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you can see my level of confidence here. Uh, you're going to need a cable to back up some of the photos on your phone if you're not uh, using the full quality backup from Google. I definitely recommend grabbing those manually. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, that is a subject for another video that I'm probably not going to do. But anyway, this is the um, first thing you need is to do a backup, which I've already done. The second thing is to power off your phone. You're not going to be able to see very well there, but um, that is the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And then um, we'll show you some of the other tools. So power that off. You can see it's shutting down. Uh, let's see. So um, I have a screwdriver kit here. Um, I have, of course, the SIM ejection tool. Uh, or if you have a screwdriver set like this, you got little things like that uh, that do the same basic thing. So that's usually good enough. Uh, I'm going to be using a series of blades. I'm, I'm sure you could use other X-Acto knives and things like that, but I find that in things like this, the uh, strength of this blade right here, and it's skinny enough to get into those little places without damaging the components inside. So that is our goal for this. Um, so if I need extra support, I'll use the, the whole structure here. Uh, let's see. Now, other videos on this uh, amuse me greatly because they'll call this a, a plastic uh, tool of some sort. Uh, but the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, this is a guitar pick, and anybody who tells you different is smoking something they shouldn't. So we'll do some uh, Snarling Dogs brain picks, um, to, mostly because I use them all the time. And hey, this could become a paid endorsement someday, you never know. But. Anyway, that's uh, that. We've got, of course, our battery here. And uh, we have a heat gun. There is no way I'm getting that in the shot. It's a heat gun. <laughs> and of course, if all else fails, that's the nuclear option, folks. And uh, I brought it out just in case. Hopefully my frustration level doesn't reach that point. All right, let's get started. So first things first, we need to remove these little covers right here. You may not have realized these are covers, but that's exactly what they are, especially this one that is actually uh, covering the uh, camera and whatnot. So these need to come off, and the best way to do that, uh, or so I'm told, is to, instead of trying to pry it loose, use a heat gun to loosen the adhesives, and then uh, get in there with the uh, blades, use some cards, whatever you need to do to get that popped off safely so we can get it put back on. So we're going to use our heat gun and get started. This process takes forever. And I almost melted my, uh, I almost melted the, whatever this thing is. So we're starting over. <laughs> okay, I just 
has started to melt it. So that's probably not what you want to do. And uh, the hammer option is starting to seem more and more like that might happen. The new title of this video might end up being How to Ruin a $600 phone in just $15. other videos out there that I've seen on this um, show doing this with a playing card something like that uh, on this piece of it there's nothing under here that really matters in fact I'm contemplating not even putting the thing back on I'm not sure what that is. I hope it's not important. Anyway, you can see that there's uh, screws under here. So I think all that little tab was is just a quality assurance seal with a little um, dot. Yep, that's all it is. A little code with a little dot that covers the, the screw. So we're fine. Don't care. Re Readhesive that later. Um, yeah. So at this point in the video, I realized that I forgot to eject the SIM card. So make sure you do that. Well, try. You've seen that before if you use this phone. So yeah, don't forget to eject your SIM card. But anyway, we're gonna get started on this one, and this is the part that I'm really hoping I don't screw up. doing this you may want to use a, a blade that is thinner than this one this is nice and strong but I'm actually having a lot of trouble getting under this and so you may want to use something a little bit thinner to get under here I should have mentioned at the start of this video I'm trying to use these blades that are already dulled um, just because I don't need I don't need the sharpness I just need the thinness and the strength Oof. yeah let's scratch the lens that was a close one yeah the metal body gets warm Jeez. yeah it gets warm you can see the smoke coming off of my uh, heat gun because I haven't use this very much but uh, you can't see that it's not going to terrify you and I'm going to start from the other end here <laughs> just because I'm so concerned about slipping and scratching my camera lens or camera um, cover I guess you'd call it Okay, I officially love all the videos online that make this look easy. Because I think I'm just breaking this at this point. In fact, yeah, I'm confident. In fact, there it goes. Probably not going to be able to see this very well, but. actually shattered this a little bit this is a glass piece obviously and so I'm really glad I started from this other end so officially start from this other end if you're doing this job and don't be impatient like I am where you end up with cracked glass this I'm probably gonna be miffed about for a long time anyway. Get up enough space here to put something safe in there. And there we go. Now it's coming right up.
you don't want to use the blade for anything you don't have to because as you can see I'm getting close to where the components are underneath there. I want to have to call this a bad phone just because of that. There we go. Much, much better. Okay. I'm going to let that cool. And I'll let the entire thing cool actually a little bit. And then we're going to go on to the next step with the screwdriver. Okay, our next step is going to be to actually remove the screws here. Um, and you can see, actually before I do that, there is one um, little cover here that needs to come off. And we're going to see if I can get that off. I'm not going to try and do too much here. And if this doesn't come off easily, I'm just going to force it out um, with, with another method. But honestly, this should just come right out. I'm sure if you were trying to make this a professional job, uh, or if you cared about the warranty at all on this, you'd do this job a lot differently. However, this phone has been out of warranty for a long time, so who cares? So I'm just gonna use a knife to get this off, as that little bit is never gonna be used again. There we go. So now a screwdriver, and we have little things to come off here. So now you've removed all these screws, um, there are a total of six, two up top, four down below, and you would think that this would just be, oh, now it just comes right off, but uh, unfortunately it's not that easy, and now comes the most nerve-wracking part, which is actually separating the top from the, from the entire structure, which is, I'll be honest with you, the part I'm most nervous about. Okay, so our next step, like I said, is to get that up from the top there, uh, and the first thing I'm going to try here is just to use one of the um, guitar picks and uh, if you've seen any video that calls this a plastic opening tool yeah, I just want to shoot myself and in my case it's actually working fairly well to create some space in here but I just I feel some some lack of give here so I'm just kind of putting some pressure on with my thumb just to kind of break it loose a little bit and then I will just uh, kind of pry it with the guitar pick very carefully. Notice I'm starting from the bottom of the phone. Um, I was just noticing when I was kind of doing some flexing with it because of the uh, opening down here for the USB-C it is a little bit more flexible down there so it makes it an easier place to open. And once this gets started it's actually fairly easy so um, yeah oh my gosh that was super duper easy. And there you have it. There is the, what I assumed was a metal case, but um, metal doesn't make that sound, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a really good paint job. So uh, congratulations to however you pronounce that, for fooling me into thinking that was a metal case. Good job. All right, now for the part that uh, does actually kind of um, interest me a little bit in most videos I've seen you end up detaching all of, of these connectors me I don't think that's really going to be necessary uh, so I'm going to start from the top here and work my way down and to do this I am actually going to use my trusty tweezers You can see that just pops right off of there, of the main thing here. And, yep, as I suspected, that uh, comes right up. So, we will replace this. And uh, one thing I did notice about this, and I, I definitely wanted to verify this, 
So when I saw this battery, I freaked out. I'm not gonna lie to you because it's a liquid polymer, <laughs> liquid polymer, a lithium polymer battery. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, those kind of batteries, that is the same kind of thing that's used in uh, drones and things like that. So it's very lightweight, a lot of power, but the um, uh, battery structure itself is bordering on the insane for uh, being uh, hot and things like that. So I'm really surprised that they went that route, uh, but hey, that's my personal thing. So uh, next step here, I need to take this little guy off of here. And I am beginning to see why the other videos I've seen on this start from the top. That is because this little guy ends up doing the same thing. There we go. And that came off anyway. So I guess uh, don't worry about starting from the bottom here. It's not going to do you any good. My thought was you didn't have to take both of these up, but I guess they're going to come up anyway. So go ahead and carefully Take the whole thing up. This is the only one that we really care about for right now, and that is the one that is going to attach the battery itself. So let's get that off of there. All right. Now the battery itself is covered in this plastic, uh, but that means that it's adhered down. And so what we're going to have to do is pry this thing loose. And I'm hoping they don't have to apply any heat to do that. Um, so we're gonna just hope for the best. This is probably where my trusty Panera car is gonna come in. Um, you can see a little opening right here that um, is gonna be my best friend. So what I'm gonna do is take the guitar pick and um, just really wedge it in there. And so you can see it's the guitar pick itself is just kind of disappearing. What I'm doing is I'm trying to basically saw through the, the adhesive as much as I can and to get to the point where I can stick a playing card or in my case my trusty uh, Panera card that I never use because I have a phone number. But um, I can see the battery itself flexing which um, I'll be honest is freaking me out. But uh, hey, this is a battery I'm replacing, right? So no big deal. I'm sawing through more. And I'm try and put more of the card surface in. this much adhesive on something that was going to be completely sealed in anyway. I have no clue, but maybe it's a vibration thing, who knows. Fortunately, I'm confident that there's nothing under here that's going to be damaged by having a little bit of pressure to it, so I'm just continuing to, to work it in. Go. Probably should have been more patient, but you know, things to do today. There we go. And one spent battery that should never ever be used again. Uh, yeah, so this is nice and tacky. Um, yeah, so. I'm going to put the replacement battery in. Well, that was a lot easier. Push it right in. As you can see here, there's this, the little um, the three connectors here. And this is the first one. These are nice because all you do is line it up and 
and push it in and you can feel it hit home and you're good to go. Love these. Modern technology. All right. Make sure that's nice and pushed in. And do the same thing with the other guy here. Lines up. Boom. <sighs> you gotta be kidding me. Okay, don't do this. Don't do what I just did. And this is the little hinge here. You gotta put that in first. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little, right under the fingerprint sensor, there's a little catch right there for this little metal piece. So get that in there. And then you can place it in. As the emails come in. Hello, emails. Okay, push that down. I'm gonna grab our screwdriver and the, one of the seven screws. This is number seven. Now this one, don't forget this. What I'm doing here is just pushing this down and taking any slack out because this one is a little bit of a tight fit. And you can definitely tell when it's not on there. It's, they're, they don't look it, but they're, they're notched so that if it's out of alignment, it's not gonna put in there, but there we go. There's that, and uh, folks, we are almost done. All I have to do now is put our cover back on, which should just snap right into place. I'm just reversing the, okay, my phone just turned on. So I guess we're getting a uh, earlier than scheduled confirmation that everything's good, but as you can see, we are powering on. Fortunately, I don't have to use any more glue or, or any more heat, <laughs> and so uh, I'm just going to continue on. Because, like I said, I got stuff to do today. I actually damaged this, so odds of this staying on are pretty darn low. Yeah, I'm gonna need some adhesive in order to do this, so I will do that later. But. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, uh, let's see, you need to put the SIM card thing back in. My goal was to do that after I was done before I rebooted the phone, but there you go. Uh, let's see, it shifted 38%. Let's see if we can get a charge into this without it blowing up. now which is awesome so it's obviously charging um, I guess I'll try and report back later about how well everything else does but uh, we are going to get some adhesive and put the back panel back on just because it feels awfully awkward so we'll see how we do here I'm totally doing this wrong don't use this as an example of what not to do folks my examples, jeez. Don't pour glue directly on your phone. Just putting a little bit, just a smidge, on the, uh, on the panel here, and I'm spreading it out evenly. It's just basically your standard stinky all-purpose cement. Um, 
that you'd use like on models and things like that. Because I'm pretty confident that um, I'm never going to want to get this again and if I do I'll tear the back off and just leave it. So that should work just fine for me. And awesome. I did a number on that one. Guess I'll be buying a case for this, ladies and gentlemen. Because that's uh, it's gonna scratch the pocket. Just gonna check on this real quick, make sure it's not gonna come up on me. Feels like the glass has adhered well, so I think we're gonna call this a success. So there you have it folks, repairing your Nexus 6P battery for about $15 using tools you probably have at home, except for the heat gun, but I'm sure if you really wanted to you could use a hair dryer. Just be very careful about doing that because that's a wide spread of heat instead of a, a closely you know, focused amount of heat which you get with a heat gun. But other than that, I'm willing to bet you could do it. Uh, obviously, uh, don't do like I did. Uh, take your time with it so you don't end up with freaky uh, marks from where it overheated and melted. But, or, <laughs> if you can see, actually you can't see that very well, but I get the angle just right, you can see where that's actually broken glass. Uh, so, there's what not to do, but other than that, I'm going to be pretty happy with this because, hey, I just saved myself about $900. So my apologies to Samsung because I'm not getting a phone this year. Peace out, everybody. Instead of uh, subscribing, just share this with somebody. I'm sure it'll help somebody else out and maybe save some money. And uh, Okay, it's not going to save the planet. I'm sorry. But maybe it'll help a little bit. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this far, and I wanted to give you kind of a recap of everything in the video, just real quick. First off, obviously disclaimer, don't do this. I mean, well, do it, but only if you are okay voiding your warranty, and you can withstand things like little uh, gotchas here about, you know, ruining the look and feel of your phone. Yeah, it's going to happen probably, unless you're doing this all the time, have the professional tools and all that kind of stuff. Little things like this will happen. But at the same time, like I was saying, uh, you know, under 20 bucks just saved me about 900 bucks, and so there's nothing wrong with that. Now, as far as performance goes, I want to say a quick little note about that. The battery life in this phone is pretty much like it was when I first got it. Maybe even better in some ways and worse in other ways. It really depends on how you're using the phone. For me, I have not rooted this. This is still a stock phone as far as that goes, but the battery life is a drastic, drastic improvement, and uh, I can't say enough about that, I guess. But the big thing about the battery life that I noticed is I actually had a 16, 17-hour workday uh, a couple days ago, and the phone was not charged for the entire thing, and at the end of the day, it still had yeah, probably a good f almost 50% battery life. And so what I'm noticing is that there is a, a little drop first, and then it just kind of stabilizes around 70% and drops very slowly after that. So I don't know what that's all about, but the bottom line is the battery is lasting a lot longer. And I have not had a single shutdown for battery since I did the switch to the new battery. So... Yeah, I'd say that this overall is, is worth my having done it. Then again, I have done some of these kind of things before. I have a lot more confidence in um, doing this. Obviously, if you didn't have the ability to go out and get a replacement phone, this is a really bad idea. Don't, don't bother until you're ready. But uh, if you're looking to do this as an alternative, great. Hey, as far as subscribing and whatnot, like I said, I'm not really concerned about subscribers right now because the way YouTube is doing things at the moment, it's not going to matter. However... Um, I do thank you for, for watching this video. I hope it's helpful to you. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments, and I'll try and answer them as I get a chance. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can visit me at uh, djeshelman.com if you really want to be inspired and uh, leave the world better than you found it. That's a great place to do that. But other than that, thanks for indulging me in this very random uh, out-of-the-blue video. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great day.